Bernard, let's say we ag absolutely agree that there is fine tuning, whether it's a bro broader range or smaller range relative to what those are controversial questions. But I, I want to get to the philosophy of it. What, what are the implications, the potential implications? The way I like to start is what are, what are the alternatives? It, I'm not asking you which do you believe. I'm saying what are all the alternatives that you've seen having followed fine tuning for many decades now, four decades or so, mm -hmm. what, what are the different kinds of interpretations? Well, I have to say that I myself am a, a little bit ambivalent about this. When I'm addressing physicists, I always argue that the multiverse is the most cogent explanation mm -hmm. for the fine tunings. Because the point is the multiverse has not just been created specially to explain the, mind, the fine tunings, the multiverse has come out of ordinary physics. It's come out of the world. It's in cosmology and, it, and particle physics. And so that is my personal favorite. But I have to say that a lot of physicists uh, are not happy with the multiverse either because they regard that as rather too philosophical <laughs> for, for other reasons we, we may get into. On the other hand, if I'm speaking to people of a theological disposition, obviously they're more interested in the possibility that the fine tunings could be evidence of, of God. Now, I have to say that I'm not sure that you can make a clear distinction, you know, between whether you want the multiverse or God. Many people have argued that the multiverse is just as mysterious <laughs> and as, as God. Um, what I do think is that if you do have only one universe, I do think there is, a, there is a real mystery here why these fine tunings come about. And if there's only one universe, it, it may well be fairly natural to invoke some sort of fine tuner. That doesn't necessarily mean God, but it, it means some form of great intelligence behind the universe. The, uh, the counter argument to that would be it, that as we discover deeper laws of physics, we would eventually find where the, uh, the, the deepest law of physics generates such that it that those constants have to be the way they are, they couldn't be any other way to make consistent with this one underlying law. That's, that's a, a, a goal of physics and it's a potential explanation for fine tuning. It may not be satisfactory and there are other questions in terms of why then is that biologically friendly, but nonetheless it's an option. Well, most physicists would always prefer to say that when we have our final theory of physics, that it will predict the constants of nature uniquely, and so there's no need for <laughs> any of these other semi-metaphysical <laughs> explanations for the God. values of the constants. <laughs> and in, fa in some sense, even when myself and Martin Rees wrote our paper, we always regarded these anthropic arguments as a sort of stopgap uh -huh. explanation until you had something better. But the trouble with that is that it is by no means clear that the final theory will predict right. the constants uniquely, and even if the final theory does predict the constants uniquely, it remains an amazing coincidence that the constants predicted uniquely are the ones which are required for life. So my personal opinion is that the final theory of physics will not predict the constants uniquely. I think that there are some constants of physics which are going to be contingent in the sense that they could, they could have different values. And, and that's why I guess I'm a... I'm a Component of the multiverse picture, which says that you, these constants can have different values. If, if the final theory of physics was going to predict all the values of physics uniquely, there would be no point in invoking a multiverse because all the universes would have the same values of the, of the uh -huh. constants. So, and, and personally, I think the evidence is that the final theory of physics is not going to predict. I mean, that's we've certainly always been the trend. That's the trend. I mean, we, people hoped that M theory was going to predict the constants, but it hasn't succeeded. And in fact, if anything, some people think that M theory predicts that the, the values of the constants could be enormous. You know, we could have these 10 to the 500 vacuum states, okay. which means 10 to the 500 different sets of values for the constants and things like that. So the evidence I would say at the moment is that the final theory of physics will not predict the constants uniquely. And oh. therefore you then forced into one of your two alternatives, multiverse or some sort of an... Then you would think you were forced into this alternative of the multiverse or some, some fine tuner. But I do think that when we do have the final theory of physics, which in some sense is going to merge relativity theory and, and quantum theory, 
I suspect this final theory of physics somehow has to refer to this problem of the fine-tuning. Mm. Because, in other words, I guess I'm saying that the final theory of physics probably has to have something to say about the nature of the observer. But that is, again, not a, a, a mainstream view, but I mean, I just think the final theory of physics may have something to, to say about the, the nature of the observer, the role of the observer in the universe.